Are you looking to make hundreds of dollars from the comfort of your own home doing easy and legitimate jobs? Then look no further. Just head right over to... Hey everybody, welcome to Make Money From Home. Today, we'll be showing you seven amazing, safe, and legitimate ways to make additional money from the comfort of your own home. Make sure to stay right till the end as we'll show you the exclusive best jobs to make the most money possible. For now, that's all, so let's jump right into the video. Jumping into things at number one is virtual babysitting. So a new thing has risen up in the need for parents to access childcare, combined with the ability to safely have childcare workers come to their home. So let's talk about virtual babysitting. Basically, this is when you're spending time with a child via things like Zoom or Skype while the parent is home but otherwise occupied. The demand for this service has exploded. It's up 700% in the last month, according to Elizabeth Harz, the CEO of Sitter City, which is a website that connects parents and babysitters. And of course, this is not a complete replacement for parental supervision. And the sessions are usually on the shorter side, lasting about an hour or so. So the parent can accomplish another task and the activities can range anywhere from doing little workshop activities together to reading a book to learning some kind of exercise class or just spending time with the child while the parent can focus their attention elsewhere. Rates can range from about $15 to $36 an hour with an average somewhere around $16.50 an hour. And usually the sessions are booked in multiples and paid for up front. Sites like care.com will allow you to set up a profile and specify virtual only for the time being. This can be a great opportunity for people who have a lot of experience with kids. Maybe you've had your own, or you've had experience with nannying or babysitting, or just been the oldest of many siblings. If you're good at taking the lead in these situations and you can figure out creative ways to keep children engaged, because obviously you can't be physically there to keep them in the room, so you have to make them want to stay and pay attention to you. It's a pretty cool challenge and something that can easily add to your monthly income. Number two is virtual assistancing. Unlike virtual babysitting, virtual assistance jobs have been around for a pretty long time. Everyone from authors looking to get ready to head out on a book tour or large companies looking to keep some of their workforce remote have utilized virtual assistance for years. And there's no one set of definitions or list of responsibilities for a virtual assistant. But common ones can include things like calendar management, setting up meetings and work trips, managing emails, updating websites, and sometimes even updating social media channels. Although social media management is often a job in its own right. The average hourly rate is around $15.80 according to Payscale, with an upper boundary just under $30. For more resources, you can check out things like the International Virtual Assistance Association or the Virtual Hub, which matches assistance with clients, and so forth and so on. The most important skills for this sort of job are things that you might imagine, like organization, clear communications, timeliness, attention to detail, and heavy familiarity with basic office software. But if you have higher level communication skills around things like using the latest apps or social media and communication tools, that can easily give you an edge. Check out sites like Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr for listings. Number three is tutoring. If you have a background in education or a specific field, or have a heavy knowledge in a specific skill, like for example, fluency in another language, or the ability to very accurately teach English, then you could be in big demand. This is because parents are now turning to tutors to help supplement their children's online classes that they're taking to make sure they don't fall behind. For example, tutoring company Varsity Tutors saw a 40% increase in demand in April. Again, mostly stemming from this total shift that we've had in the way kids are learning. The rates for tutoring do vary wildly, depending on your level of education, expertise in a subject, experience with tutoring and more, and also whether you're an independent contractor or work with an agency. The average hourly rate for a tutor at companies like Huntington, Varsity Tours, Mathnasium, and so on is about $13.85 an hour. Independent tutors who set their own hourly prices typically make closer to $26 an hour, and that's with minimum experience. 
But if you're already flying high in a subject and have a natural ability to help other people learn, you might want to give this a try yourself. Number four on the list is transcription and translation. Transcription is very simply the art of listening to an audio recording very closely and writing down exactly what is said. This often will happen for things like interviews, and there are three main types of transcription, general, medical, and real-time. General transcription includes writing out anything pre-recorded like lectures, interviews, podcasts, and even captioning videos, which we use on this channel. Medical transcription is more specialized and does require skills with medical terminology. Medical transcriptionists listen to a doctor's recorded notes on a patient and transcribe those notes into the patient's file. Real-time transcription is different from the other types because it isn't off a pre-recorded audio. You're typing up an event as it happens. Unfortunately, most real-time transcription jobs aren't remote. They're things like court cases and public events, but there are some amazing opportunities if you're incredibly fast and good with your typing and writing. The average hourly rate for these jobs is about $15.12 an hour. Translation work can also be bundled in with transcription work. Often, these rates are higher because it requires a dual skill of being a good transcriber along with being bilingual. A great place that hires these services is transcriptionservices.com. But it's worth noting that these places often pay per minute of audio transcribed rather than a set hourly rate, often somewhere between 25 cents and 65 cents a minute, which on average takes about four minutes to do because you're frequently having to stop and re-listen to the recording. However, if you're subtitling, that will often change to about $1.50 to $3 a minute. So if you think this is work you could do, why not get started today? If you're enjoying the video, remember to subscribe and leave us a like. Let us know what tips and videos you want to see next time. We'd really love to hear from you. Number five is remote data entry and management. Data entry is very simply the act of taking some kind of information that a company has received, could be anything from a PDF to an audio recording to a Word document, and translating it into data that's organized and stored by the company. In less fancy terms, it's often just the act of typing things up and entering them into a spreadsheet. Bookkeeping and payroll are very common examples of data entry jobs. Data entry, though, can go well beyond that and involve things like managing and organizing documents, updating company information, and managing financial budgets. Technically, transcription is also a form of data entry work, and it's one of the more common ones. According to Payscale, the average rate for data entry is about $13.36 an hour. Admittedly, this is pretty general kind of work and can often be bundled into things like secretarial or administrative work, or even be included in things like those virtual assistant jobs we were talking about earlier. If you have experience with, for example, things like coding, that can mean you have a much higher level of experience to offer when it comes to data management and therefore can look for more technical opportunities. Stick around because we'll be looking into coding in the future. Number six is copywriting. Copywriting is basically just writing the text portion of ads or promotional materials. And while high-level copywriting can be a high-paying job, there's quite a lot of copy every day that's often just written by freelancers. Think of the descriptions that you see for a dress on a store's website or social media posts from a brand. Often, those are done by freelance copywriters. Other common examples are things like website copy, email marketing campaigns, and even things like coupon language. Copywriting does require a bit of expertise. It's also worth noting that copywriters are paid more frequently per project than per hour, negotiating a set fee for a certain number of ads, descriptions, or whatever area they're working in. But according to Payscale, the average hourly rate breaks down to about $19.95. If you have general writing experience to your name, that can be a great skill to translate into copywriting, for which the work is often more steady and paid better, bringing you to a really nice legitimate income. Lastly, number seven for not sketchy real ways to make an extra source of income is to simply catch all freelance opportunities that come your way. If none of the above apply, or even frankly, if they all do, there's always the opportunity of going onto websites, apps, forums, and any social media platform that offer different types of freelance and one-off gigs for things that may not fit neatly into any one category. 
Sites like Fiverr, Freelancer, Upwork, TaskRabbit are all great places where you can turn any skill you might have, even some that you wouldn't normally think could make you money, into a way to catch all of those one-off gigs. Individuals post looking for all kinds of things, from graphic design to video editing, script writing, and everything else we've spoken about today. And the best thing about it is the large majority of the listings can be done from the comfort of your own home. It's worth noting that some of these sites do take a certain percentage of your rate, usually about 20%. But some people choose to mark up their price so they can still get paid a fair rate after the site takes its cut. And while most of the highest paid freelancers do eventually establish their own client base and work with them directly, these websites can be a great way to build a network, build your skills in various areas, build word of mouth, and gain the confidence to potentially go out on your own. If you have a skill other people would want to learn or benefit from, chances are you can find a way to make a little money off it. The point of all of this is that we're entering pretty unprecedented times here. Where not only are we all going to have to be a little bit more creative about the way we make money, but we're also going to have to get more comfortable with a life that's a little bit more digital and remote than it used to be. So if you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of how to make money working from home and much, much more. Check out this video and I'll see you soon. Take care.